bustling city of Lagos is fast expanding. People all across Nigeria come here seeking a better quality of living. With this increase in numbers, heavy traffic, fondly known as go slow in these parts, has become part of life in Lagos. <laughs> Lagos is home to approximately 22 million people, yet it is Nigeria's smallest state in size. With 20 industrial estates and four central business districts, it is no surprise that the city has become a magnet for people from other states. Transportation in Lagos is mainly road-based. The high population and the lack of infrastructure often results in traffic jams within the state. The existing transport systems in Lagos are not able to meet present and future travel demands. Traffic congestion affects productivity and makes the cost of doing business expensive. The first thing you have to understand is, when you're talking about Lagos today, you're talking about 21, 22 million people in, in terms of numbers. It could roughly equal probably 10 small countries in Africa. Countries of 2 million population, 1.7, million population. So it's a, it's, it's, it's a nation within a state, so to say. It's, it's a nation state. It's a huge, huge state. According to the Lagos state government, the city loses billions of Naira every year as a result of traffic congestion. The major thing we have to think about as a government is how do we take away all this burden from our road? Lagos today has the highest number in the world of people migrating from the rural areas into the urban. It's about 85 people per hour, you know, which is the largest in the world, the fastest in the world. As more and more people come into Lagos State, because again, the economic is getting better, you know, works, you know, uh, are, are being made available. We've just, you know, we have the Employment Trust Fund of 25 billion Naira, which has kicked into. So as we have more and more resources coming through to Lagosians, you have more people coming from other states to come and work and live in Lagos, and they put enormous pressure on the infrastructure and the resources you've got. The vision for Lagos State lies in the establishment of an intermodal transportation system, one that matches standards of a world-class megacity. This falls in line with the government's drive towards a smart Lagos. A strategic long-term plan has been developed aimed at transforming the state's transport sector. We came up with um, seven rail lines. We have 14 BRT routes. We have 700 and about, I think 735 bus routes all over Lagos. We have um, water transport routes as well. The intention is to provide multimodal transport connection for the people of Lagos so that you can either travel by uh, water and bus, or by water transport and rail, or by bus and, 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 uh, and, and rail, and they just all form of connections to provide alternatives uh, for people traveling. But you, for you to do that, you need to understand their needs. And that is what has been missing in the past, and that is what we have done. Damaged roads and poor drainage systems in the state have contributed to the traffic gridlock. However, work has started on two major road networks and flyovers have been commissioned, all aimed at reducing traffic in the city. Furthermore, plans are in place for the development of the fourth mainland bridge and completion of this project is expected to make a huge impact on traffic in Lagos. We are quite excited uh, by the fact that we've just recently, I think May 25, uh, we've just recently signed uh, uh, the MOU on the construction of Fort Milan Bridge, uh, which, as you know, has been long in coming. Uh, some people say it's long overdue that we have such uh, a bridge to ease the burden of, of, uh, of traffic in Lagos State. Uh, in terms of investors, uh, you have a consortium of you know, three main groups, basically. You've got uh, the visible assets, uh, you've got the assets bank, and you've got the African a finance corporation, the AFC, uh, they are driving, uh, that is the, the main consortium. But then you have a lot of other players, 
uh, when you percolate down at the aisle, you have other players who are very interested in it. So largely, I mean, it is a private sector driven initiative. The Lagos State government does not have a penny in the 844 billion Naira uh, project. Uh, of course, we have the right of way and so on and so forth in terms of equity, but we haven't we're not contributing a penny. Truly, we need a fourth Milan bridge, we need a fifth Milan bridge, we need a sixth Milan bridge, we need a seventh Milan bridge, we need as many as possible uh, bridges to cross from one end to the other. For the average Lagosian, getting around the city has been made easier by the adoption of the bus transit system here in Lagos. <laughs> Lagos became the first African city to implement a BRT system in 2008. This system has had a significant impact on transport in the state. We have two types of a BRT, the one we call a BRT light, which was the first, very first one. We uh, executed in the year 2007 between CMS and the MI-12. We refer to that one as a BRT light. The BLT Classic, which is the one we've just uh, completed last year, October, is between my 12 and the Kurudu. Now we're carrying roughly about 300,000 people daily on the BRT system. And that's just one uh, route from Ikurudu to TBS. And I believe it's a very laudable scheme because you get people to work on time. And there are lots of people now that leave their car at home and use, use the bus. I don't know if you notice, when you are going home in the evening, I don't know where you live, but um, when you look at the BRT corridor, it's always empty, or it's only the buses, BRT buses that right, goes on it. All other buses do not go on it. Um, the issue of um, encroachment by other downfalls, other users, all of that has become th things of the past. It has been better than it used to be. Uh, I want to believe that it's a great improvement on public transportation, but it is not without its own disadvantages, of course, and chief among which we're going to mention the number of buses. Perhaps it's not enough, because the time we sometimes have to stand and spend waiting for the buses to come. The Lagos State Government plans to build on the success of the BRT system with a replication along other corridors in the metropolis. With the regulation of buses in Lagos, we're looking at two types of projects and schemes for bus management in our city. And there's, of course, the bus rapid transit, which is to carry a lot more people on dedicated routes. But beyond those, there's a need for us to reorganize buses in Lagos. People will be familiar with the mini buses that are operating in Lagos at the moment. And the idea is to try and move them away and get them into a form that is regulated. So identify various routes that the buses should apply, and then get a seasoned, experienced, an organized and formal operator in to operate on those specified routes. Now BFFG's bus franchise scheme is our first attempt at doing that between the corridor at Ikotun all the way to Yanakwaja ending up at Maryland. And it happens that it's integrated with the BRT system that operates in Lagos. Another major part of the strategic master plan lies in the development of the Lagos Rail Mass Transit Network. This consists of seven railway lines. Of the seven, two take priority, the blue line and the red line. Any city like Lagos with a population of 22 million and having 20, uh, 22 to 20, 25 million trips per day uh, must have a people's mover. And what we call the people's mover, is, mass mover is the um, um, rail lines that uh, move people en masse. And uh, that is what, one of the things that has been lacking in Lagos. And for the first time, we are building the, um, the intrastate uh, rail system. The, this is the first of its kind in 100 years in Nigeria. There is no, there is no city that has ever done it in Nigeria. We're the first one doing it. There are seven lines planned for Lagos, and that's come out of our transport master plan for the city. It envisages a multimodal and integrated system, like all other cities across the world. We are, we've identified seven main corridors, which we believe will be best served by railways, which um, has the capacity to carry a lot more passengers very quickly and usher them to their destinations in record time.
We have started with the blue and the red lines. The blue is under construction. The first phase is almost completed. The red line is an advanced stage of planning and already we have a concessionaire in place that is providing the funds to, for its implementation. But beyond the blue and the red lines, we do have a green line, we have an orange line, we have a brown line, we have a purple line as well, um, and I think and a yellow line, which, com which makes it all seven lines altogether across the city of Lagos. From day one, um, uh, it, it will start with about uh, between 400 to 500,000 passengers per day. Ultimately, it will be carrying about 700,000 passengers per day. Whereas the red line, when it's constructed and ready, would start with about uh, 500,000 passengers per day and end up carrying about 1 million passengers per day. Lagos is one fifth water, yet the road remains the prime mode of transportation in the state. Lagos State Government, through His Excellency Mr. Akil Miambade, is extremely committed to the rapid development of the water transportation sector. By de-emphasizing the usage of roads, the Lagos State Government aims to ease traffic by encouraging investments in water and railway transportation. Public transportation will be incorporated into an integrated ticketing and fare system, making travel between different modes a seamless operation. When you're traveling from one mode to the other, you can actually interchange from one system to the other. But integration goes beyond just physical integration. Integra integrating the ticketing system is also an important and essential part of providing an integrated system so that when you have one particular card, for those who are familiar with what happens in London, for example, with one Oyster card you can travel on the buses, you can also travel on the railway. And it's a similar system that we envisage for Lagos. There are challenges, um, you know, establishing that in Lagos or anywhere else for that matter, because it means we have to be able to coordinate all the activities of the various operators. But generally speaking, that's the ambition and the aims of the Lagos State Government. Lagos is nearly twice the population size of London, a city with five international airports. Yet, it is served by only one international airport. The Murtala Mohammed International Airport in Lagos accounts for over 50% of air traffic in Nigeria. To boost regional and international air traffic, the Lagos State Government is making efforts to secure investment for the construction and management of the Lekki International Airport in Lagos. We have um, identified and, and uh, planned to build a green line uh, from uh, CMS that will go through Lekki to connect the Lekki Airport, Lekki Seaport, Lekki um, Free Trade Zone as well. And um, I, I know that a lot has been done. Um, yes, uh, what people do not know is that when the government is quiet, especially Lagos State government, when we are quiet about uh, of, um, talking about ourselves, it means we are doing a lot on, on that need. In the second half of the show, we will shift attention to water as a means of transportation in Lagos State.
metropolitan state like Lagos, connectivity is key. And water transportation could be the answer to the complex transport situation in this megacity. Water is a law was enacted in 2008 by the House of Assembly, and since 2008 till now, the ridership numbers have grown from about more than a thousand percent. So, where we started at about 200,000 uh, monthly, we're now at about two million passengers a month. Today, we have seven ferries owned by Lagos Ferry Services, but as I speak with you, we have two on this Oroshoki jetty that you see behind me, then we'll have five in my two jetty. But of course, the governor in his uh, approach to a new Lagos has decided that he's not going to make do with old ferries. He's looking at modern ferries. So all of the seven ferries, the governor has approved the disposal of those seven ferries. I live at Ikorodu and Getting to the office, I need to resume my office at least by 8. And I have to leave home by 7 because I need to dress the children to school. So it's more convenient for me, you know, because of the time. You know, yeah, because it's from Ikorodu to Lekki is about 15 minutes. It's faster for me to avoid all the traffic on the road. And as a working mother, I need to get to my office early because going through the road is quite stressful and I prefer using the waterway. A trip from Ikoyi in Lagos Island to Ikorodu on the mainland by water takes 30 minutes. Yet most Lagosians prefer to sit in traffic for three to four hours to make this journey. What is it that prevents commuters from seeing water as a viable transport option? Some people are scared, number one. Um, number one, safety first, because uh, if you look at the boats, some of the drivers, they are not well trained. So people are so conscious of their lives. So if anything happens, of course, you are going there. Is no safety. There is no insurance cover. Yeah, of course, we use life jackets. And being that the life jacket works with your weight. So most times, if the life jacket is not tally with your weight, of course, if anything happens, you know, well, God knows. Most Lagosians have an inherent phobia for using the water and that phobia stems from the fact that we don't as a state have a swimming culture. One of the ways that the state is attacking that is by going straight to the source, going to the schools and creating a swimming culture amongst the youth and teaching them about water survival techniques. While it's great to hear that the Lagos State Government is committed towards safety and security of waterways, infrastructure remains a challenge. In terms of infrastructure, now the state is extremely committed as well to providing. So that, to be honest, is one of the shortfalls that also hinders the growth of water transportation. Where we have the operating side, which is a provision of standard vessels, but the key part is also ensuring that we have the adequate infrastructure to support support the operational movement of vessels on the water. It's one thing to create these alternative sources of transportation, but how do we make these options affordable for all? I pay 500 now from Ikorodu to Lekki. And I, I, if I go by road, I pay 600 now, so it's cheaper for me when I use the water. I pay 500 naira flat rate from Ikorodu to Falomo. But if you buy a road, I use 300 naira by road. In terms of cost, yes, I agree that the alternative mode, which is bus, is cheaper in terms of value, naira, naira value. But in terms of time value, it's definitely overall cheaper to go by water transportation because you're saving so much time by using that as an alternative. The BRT is the most affordable out there right now because even our competitors like Lagbos and the Danford drivers charge more than we do. 
Um, the maximum we charge is 195 Naira from Ikorodu to uh, TBS, and which is very, very affordable for most people. In fact, people kill waiting for our buses while all these other buses, you know, go empty. When you compare the international norm, the cost of transportation is actually between uh, 25 to 30 percent of your um, disposable income. That, that is the bench line. And that is uh, the, what we're going by. At the moment, uh, we have done a study, and, and our study actually tells us that um, people actually negotiate spend almost 45% uh, to 50% of their disposable income on transport. So we want to reduce that by providing uh, public transport. And how do we want to do it? We want to bring in private sector. Critics say that mass transit schemes like the BRT systems and light rail networks may not be enough to reduce traffic in the city of Lagos given the demand for road space. To discourage the use of cars in other megacities around the world, congestion charging schemes are used. This aims to reduce high traffic flow in central areas while raising investment funds for the city's transport system. Could this be an option the Lagos State Government is considering? Yes, it's doable. But in order for you to do it, you need to put the alternative in place. You need to put a very good public transportation system and say, OK, these are buses, these are rail, these are water transport. We've given you all of these, and it's cheaper. But if you still insist that you want to drive your car, then you have to pay above board. You have to pay a premium for you to do that. And um, eventually, we'll get, at, we'll get to that point in, in Lagos, surely. While the state works to iron out the challenges posed with creating and running an integrated system of transportation, it is clear that these challenges present opportunities for discerning investors seeking to tap into the promising transport sector in Lagos. Let's start with the sweetener. And the sweetener is that um, investing in transport in Lagos for me, it's like a jackpot. I tell you, what is to come is enough to accommodate investors, and they will have quick investment returns. Investors are also, you know, also likely to benefit if they so desire from, you know, construction of our jetties and terminals. I think it's key to say that in addition to having the terminal and jet infrastructure available for um, private investment, we're also very keen on bringing in private individuals who will come and actually operate vessels and ferries along our 30 identified commercial routes in Lagos. There's still opportunities for investors to come into the BRT system because we would like to go to other routes because we're only running one route now from Ikorodu to CMS. We'd like to go to other routes also so there's still lots of opportunities for other investors to come in also and uh, do some other routes. We've got quite a few proposals on water transportation in Lagos State. Uh, we have a major one actually currently on the table by a foreign investor, uh, which is a very, very big player on the European uh, stage and uh, which has already uh, started talking uh, to us as a government, uh, wanting to come and invest in, in Lagos State. Uh, we're still at the stages of discussing with them. Uh, we're looking at the numbers, we're looking at what they want to do, we're looking at the scope of what uh, they would like to do in Lagos State. All I can say at this stage is that uh, so far so good. It's going to be a major investment in our water transportation. And uh, we hope very soon uh, we'll be able to unveil that. I invite everybody who is interested all over the world to take advantage of the opportunity that the new Lagos offer. Waterways is the future of Lagos in terms of transportation, in terms of beating the network of the gridlock that exists on our, on our road, uh, uh, road network. So today is a multimodal transport system that government is developing. We're developing rail, we're developing the road infrastructure, and of course we're moving on to the water infrastructure. Through the creation of the Lagos State Office of Overseas Affairs and Investment, the government is working to enhance the ease of doing business in the state. As a one-stop shop for investors, Lagos Global provides investors with direct access to the state government. This cuts down on the bureaucratic bottleneck. Lagos Global is our one-stop shop for investors all over the world. And the rationale for that was 
because of the felt need to ease how we do business in Lagos State. We work very closely with that agency and office to ensure that all investors, both local and foreign, are able to uh, we're able to properly identify these opportunities and communicate them to interested investors to come in. I haven't been in the transport sector in Lagos for the past uh, 15 years. I have seen manners of uh, potential investors, serious ones, um, the mostly on, on serious ones. A lot of people come with proposals that are out of this world and all of that. So what the uh, Lagos Global will do, and they are doing right now, is that all the proposals uh, go to them, and they would look at them and look at the reasonable ones, and then send it to Ministry of Transportation, and they will take it from there. So at that point, it means we are talking to a serious potential investor that we can now dialogue with and exchange views, exchange knowledge, exchange ideas, and, and that will give us more time uh, to do other things. So the, the, the one-stop shop of uh, Lagos Global is, is, is a bonus uh, for somebody like myself. Let's go back to that picture you had in your head at the start of the show. But this time, imagine a Lagos where you could interchange between three or four different modes of transportation to get to work. Surely that would be great. However, the success and quick turnaround of these upcoming projects rely on the government's ability to turn the talk to walk. For now, go slow remains a norm in the life of the average Lagosian. Thank you for watching. I'm Didi Akiyan and see you next time on Destination Lagos. <laughs>